Because it's very rare that you find someone that is so intellectual, so brilliant, such a mensch, so humble and really respectful of everybody. And that's really who Rabbi Tucker is. He's been just an inspiration and a guide and a rabbi's rabbi. He gives his knowledge without asking anything in return. He's got a, a heart of gold. He's a very, very, very good person, and he's adorable. He's more than the rabbi who gets up on Saturday morning and gives a sermon. He has uh, been a, a part of our lives. My name is Gordon Tucker. I grew up in the Inwood section of Manhattan. Uh, I went to the Bronx High School of Science. Practically everybody at Bronx Science was smart, but you knew who really the, the very gifted students were, and Gordon was one of them. I went to Harvard College, and I majored in philosophy and mathematics. The love of the Jewish texts and the desire to be of service to the Jewish people kind of naturally merged together into the, the um, decision to go to rabbinical school. I began graduate work in philosophy at Princeton, I guess this is too late in life to get in trouble for this, but Princeton actually didn't know that I was studying for the rabbinate at JTS. I started teaching just a year after I was ordained. In 1984, I was asked to take on the deanship of the rabbinical school. Gordon was a great academic before he made the decision to become a pulpit rabbi. It's one thing to spin out theologies in, in a classroom or in a study, it's another thing to see how those theologies actually work and help people in real life. He is a tremendous scholar, an incredible, inspiring educator, but would also leave a classroom that he's teaching at a moment's notice to go help a congregant who was in crisis. If it weren't for Rabbi Tucker's advocacy for women in the rabbinate, I wouldn't be able to become a rabbi. He shows up, and he leads, and he participates at a simcha, a time to rejoice, like a wedding, or a bar mitzvah, or a bris. He's there. He's there at the darkest moments of people's life, and the happiest moments. He's there. Rabbi Tucker is a big deal because he does not take a day off. This is a man who teaches 365 days a year. I love teaching, period. He teaches to inspire growth in his students, and not just intellectual growth, moral growth as well, and also personal growth. He doesn't just, just make it about what the stories mean, but he also makes it about what we can take from the stories. You walk into a classroom, you walk into a group of people, especially young people, especially very young people, who are there to learn, everything else melts away. What amazes me always is that no matter what age group, no matter what subject Ray Tucker is teaching, he knows how to reach those people in the room. He is very supportive of everything you have to say and um, everything you notice about um, the text that you'd like to share with him. I love learning with him because he really connects what we learn to present day um, issues and circumstances. There is no end to the hours that he has put in. He considers himself completely on call at all times. I mean, I know that he's come back from vacations to uh, officiate at a funeral. He was uh, uniquely available, unconditionally available. And that's something that uh, cannot be surpassed. I'm flabbergasted that he has the time to be everything for everybody. The thing about Gordon is that he puts community before himself. He has always sought a real partnership with the, with the lay leadership of the, of the congregation. We've had a, I think, a phenomenally productive partnership for lo these 24 years. And I've worked with 13 presidents at this congregation. Um, they all get an A plus from me. I was president of the synagogue from 96 to 99. 
we had basically just outgrown the existing sanctuary, and this then led to kicking off a fundraising campaign. Some rabbis would be hesitant to go ahead and put themselves out there, but this was our community project, and he was going to be thoroughly involved with the community. Amy was a huge source of advice and in showing us and showing me how to roll out plans to the congregation, how to deal with architects, how to deal with construction managers. So the two of them were really amazingly involved. Amy is phenomenal. Amy never ever imposes herself as the wife of the rabbi, therefore you have to do this and this for me. Never. Ever. Coming to know Amy was for me coming to know what a good heart is. She is a gabai, you know, on Shabbat sometimes. I think she likes to know that things are going to run smoothly. I'm always looking for people that have never gotten an honor or women who've never accepted uh, an honor on the bima. Oh, she loves being a gabai. She does love being a gabai. And that gives her a chance to meet people. And she's very friendly. She's just like Rabbi Tucker, very humble, very smart. I just found out that she has a doctorate. There is nothing in this world as attractive in the end as goodness. She loves her children and the grandchildren. They are very family oriented. They are so in love with one another and they respect one another and they love to dance. I think if you asked Gordon, one of the things he was most proud of, I think he would say the evolution of the Israel trip. I've loved Israel for a very, very long time. We both feel at home there. I think he just connects with the people, with the land, with the history, with the religion. I love taking students. I love especially taking people there who are going for the first time. I was just recently on a Masorti Foundation mission with Gordon in Israel. It's sort of like going to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and all the great singers and artists are there, but you know, you've got Paul McCartney on your arm. There was something special to be associated with him. I think that takes strength as a rabbi and a Jewish leader to be able to say, this is an incredible country. It has so much to offer. It's your country too, but there are things that we have to work on to make it better. And that can only be done when you really look at Israel through the eyes of the people who live there. And that's, that's diversity. Inclusion is really, a, in many ways, what Judaism is about. What's particularly painful is when exclusions happen by appeal to the religion itself. Sometimes inclusion, especially in a, in a community this big, is hard. And I think that Rabbi Tucker doesn't shy away from hard. He has taught me what it really means to live a life of integrity. I've learned uh, most of what I've learned in life in many ways from this community, from these 24 years. I've learned what kind of strength and resilience people have. It was and continues to be a much more spiritual life than what I had in the academy. I just hope and pray that he enjoys his retirement <laughs> and is able to um, do things that he hasn't had the time to do. I want him to fly. I want him to um, do whatever makes him happy. It was a great ride, and no one loved it more than me. When I came here, I wasn't a kid out of rabbinical school. I was 43, but uh, what I know at 67 is a whole lot more than what I knew at 43 years old. I think we learned together a lot of truly important things about life. Someone will succeed him, no one's going to replace him. The world needs more people like Gordon Tucker.